So let's chat about PWM. PWM. So PWM stands for pulse width modulation. So like the word says, it has to do with the pulse, the thickness of the pulse, and modulation, how you alter the pulse in a certain way, how you mold it. So as you can see on the left hand side here, PWM signals are digital signals. That means a signal goes from zero volts to a certain voltage. Normally for us, it's but far volts. Where th so this is a digital signal. Then you get an analog signals. If you remember the tutorial, that is an analog voltage between, let's for example, zero to five volts. So this can be zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts, where digital is either zero or one. So it's either low or high. So pulse width, pulse width modulation is how quickly or slowly we switch on a signal. So if you look on the left hand side, I switch a signal on high and then off, and it stays off for a long time. This is a pulse width modulation signal. I've got a pulse, I've got a certain width, and I mold it in a certain form. Same for the second one. I've got a width, I've got a pulse, and it looks a bit different, so I modulated it differently. So you can see three different pulse width modulation waveforms. One, two, three. So what does this waveforms actually tell us? We're going to go deeper into that now. Okay, so you're thinking, yeah, JP, so this signal goes high, low, faster, slow. What does it actually mean? And where do we use it? So a PWM signal is a way for us to control a light of an LED, a speed of a motor, the sound of a speaker by changing how quickly you switch a signal on and off. So for example, in an LED, when I go on like this, and then I don't stay on for very long, my LED will not be that bright. How that happens is actually switches on the LED and then switches off. But I, it goes so fast that our eyes can't see that the LED is actually going off. So that's how it looks dimmer, but in actually in real life, the LED goes on, off, on, off, on, off very fast. So the faster you do it, the brighter the LED goes. So this LED will be very dim. This one will be about middle and this one will be the brightest. So you can see when my signal is on for a longer period of time, then my LED will be brighter. So let's chat about why and how this works. So how this works is actually to do with averages. So averages, basically, if I've got a whole bunch of numbers for a certain amount of time, what is the average between those numbers? For example, if you get six for a test one day and you get eight for a test the next day, your average between the two tests is seven. But I mean, you got you got eight one day, you got six the one day, and you add them together, and I get 14. And then I've got two tests, and then I divide this by two. So then I go 14 divided by two is seven and that is my average between the two numbers. So the average between eight and six is seven, add them together. So what happens if I have no more numbers? So let's take, for example, I've got the number four, four, three, and five. Then I add them together. So I've got four plus four is eight, plus three is 11, plus five is 16. So my total is 16. How many numbers do I have in the set? One two, three, four. So I've got, my total is four. So my average is 16 divided by four, which is four. So when I have a sample of four, four, three, five, my average will be four. So as a total adding together divided by how many numbers I have. Keep that in mind because this will help a lot with PWM signals. Now let's keep that thinking about averages in our head and we break our signal up into four pieces, so four sections. So section one, you can see every single line is five volts. So this one is five volts. Let's say for example, this one's five and this one's five. So we add this to our set of numbers. Then in the second one, this one is zero, this one is five, and this one is still five. You see, we take this part, this part, this part. So this is still zero, this is still high, this is still high. Then number three is zero, number three there is zero, and number three there is zero. And the last one, number four, is zero. 
zero and this is still uh, sorry that's supposed to be high thanks for checking guys so this is high and this is also high so we just broke the signal up into four different sections in our signal so what have you noticed this line stays lower way longer than the rest so our led will be less bright over here and our average here is 5 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 which is equal to 5 and then we divide it by 4 so my maths is not that good so I use a calculator 5 divided by 4 is equal to 1.25 so this average we do that with ABE is equal to 1.25 volts and the next one is we add this together 5 plus 5 plus 0 plus 0 is 10 we have four sections again, so we've got 10 divided by 4. Don't be afraid to use a calculator. If you know the answer, that's good. And that's 2.5. So my average here is equal to 2.5 volts. You guys can see what happens. So the longer my signal stays on, the higher my voltage, my average voltage occurs. So you guys can see what happens. The higher my signal stays for longer, the higher my average is on my voltage. So let's try the other one. I think you guys can see what's going to happen here. So 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. And I divide by 4. And my average will be 20 divided by 4 is 5. That makes sense because we never went to any other state but 5 volts. So you can see in this section until 4, the average voltage here is 5. The average voltage here is 2.5. And the average here is 1.25. So that's what we do when we PWM. We are changing the averages of the voltage because we cannot have an analog output. So we can change the state of my digital to kind of create an analog. So we kind of taking a digital value, which is zeros and ones, and we're creating an analog value because our eyes cannot see how quickly the lights go on and off. So for our eyes, it doesn't matter. And you can do the same this for motors, for speakers and all those things. So a motor, if I apply 1.25 volts, will be slower than a motor where I put 5 volts in. So this is a great example how you can take a digital signal and turn it into an analog signal. I hope this makes sense, guys. Again, if there's any questions, please let me know. The RGB LED. So the RGB LED stands for red, green, blue LED. So we've discussed the LED before with the long leg and short leg. So this LED is a bit different. It kind of has three LEDs built in one. So you can see it comes with four feet. One, two, three, four. One of them will be longer than the rest. And this is called your common. So it can either be a common cathode or a common anode. So if you've done the LED tutorial, you remember the cathode. If you remember panic, positive is anode, negative is cathode. So cathode means my Number two must be my ground. So common cathode means that pin two, that all my LEDs are sharing the same ground. If it was common anode, then all my LEDs would have the same power, same 5 volts or 3.3 volts. So that is what it means by common cathode. And then you can see each leg has a different color. So if I want to put on blue, I just make my blue pin high. Pin 1, I make high, it will turn blue. Pin 3, I make high, it will go green. Pin 4, I make high, it will go red. As easy as that. But what makes these LEDs so cool is you can switch on different colors at the same time. What that means is, what happens when I turn my green and red LED on together? You can see a little window. I think you guys know most of the primary colors. Uh, red and green will give me yellow. So if I turn on red and green, I can make yellow. If I turn red and blue i can make purple or pink magnet make purple or pink um, and then green and blue gives me like a light blue and that's how you can make different colors by having three colors and this is what makes this led so cool is you can play around with different colors and we will be using this with our photoresistor to change the colors depending on the light